and welcome to Mining with Mora. I'm your host, Mora. In this series, we talk about different ideas on how to increase productivity and safety and other cool trends in the industry like automation and predictability. Today, my guests are John Torpy and David Robertson. John, why don't we start with you and tell me how you met David? So when Epiroc was created, one of our top priorities was to focus on how we developed our product portfolios and product management. So we created a new development program called Product Owner Excellence. As we went out there, we looked in some universities, we asked around, and Dave's name was actually one that came up. And so we invited him in, and he came in and explained, hey, I, I do Lego, and, and that's a big part of my innovation experience. Let me explain to you how that works and how that fits. And so he had us at Lego, but when he started to explain the innovation techniques and the lessons that are also included in the book that Dave mentioned, uh, we really said this is going to be a perfect fit. And so we've been working together now for almost four years. Uh, we've put, uh, I think, more than 100 people now through our Product Owner Excellence program with Dave covering the innovation aspects of that with Lego being a key focus. Oh, that's awesome. I think you need two shirts that say, you had me at Lego. Yes. Then you'd be set with marketing, <laughs> right? <laughs> David, please tell me about yourself. Yeah, so I'm a senior lecturer at the MIT Sloan School of Management. Um, before that, I was a professor of practice at the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. And then before that, I was the Lego Professor of Innovation at uh, Switzerland's IMD, the Institute for Management Development. And that's where I wrote the book, uh, Brick by Brick, which was about Lego's near death and spectacular recovery and the lessons that any company can learn from you know, the mistakes they've made about it, managing innovation. Awesome. Well, we're happy to have you. David, what are the Lego values and what a company like Epiroc can take from the Lego experience? Yeah, so uh, Lego values and mission statement is to inspire and develop the builders of tomorrow. And they take that very seriously. You know, they really think about who their customer is and, and how they can provide a, a healthy and, and really enriching uh, play experience for those people. And so I think in terms of being a values-driven company, uh, Epiroc and Lego are fairly similar. And they both realize that making a great product isn't enough. Mm -hmm. That if all you make is a, a truck, uh, then you're going to be caught by competition, and you're going to be seen as very similar to competition, and it's going to be hard to differentiate yourself and make much profit. Mm -hmm. And so you really need to think more broadly about what you do for your customers. And so they've done a lot of things kind of around their core product mm -hmm. to really help deliver a better experience for their customers, just like Epiroc. That's awesome. David, in your book, you talk about how you innovate around the box. Can you talk about how you innovate around the box? There's often a very binary way that people talk about innovation as either incremental improvement of current products for current customers or radical reinvention, you know, disruptive products that change your industry. And I think that's a, a really dangerous uh, simplification of what the real situation is. That I think for both Epiroc and for Lego, they found that there's a third way, which is that you accept that your product may not be uh, enough to really differentiate you and get the profits and, and the growth that you want, but it's still a great product. Um, but maybe you can do some other things around it. Mm -hmm. So instead of innovating, inside the box, right? Incremental improvement of your current products mm -hmm. for your current customers, or outside the box, you know, revolutionary disruption. It's around the box. Mm -hmm. So taking that product, but then expanding it and thinking, what else can you do for your customers? And it's probably hard to get people in that thought process of around the box. That's right. And uh, the, one of the lessons of Lego, when Lego almost went bankrupt in 2003, it's because they went outside the box, so far outside the box, that the customers just said, no, thank you. I mean, you do need to really think about disruptive technologies and new things that are coming along. But if you bet the company on it, that can be trouble, as Lego showed. No, it's a good lesson. John, there are a couple of topics that you learned from the lessons that David shares. Can you share one of your favorites? One is this idea that innovation flourishes when the space for it is limited. And I think this idea, we hear this saying of do more with less, and, and that can be taken as a good thing or a bad thing. I think when you look at the story behind Lego and how 
innovation thrives and flourishes when the space for it is limited. Uh, it's a really great example of, of how you can do more with less very successfully. I think any company can look at that and take it as a lesson and apply it, not just in product innovation, but in any type of innovation. The, the role of any manager is to put some boundaries around innovation, right? Not to reinvent the future and come up with insanely great things. Um, that uh, is often too broad a, a, a strategy. But instead say, we have these constraints. We have this much cost and this much time, and we've got to meet these targets for our customers. But then give your teams freedom within those boundaries and really just uh, push them to do great things within those boundaries. That's a goal of good innovation management. No, it's a neat concept. Dave, how can Lego be used in a workshop environment to express abstract concepts? There's a whole branch of Lego called Lego Serious Play, uh, where you're trained as a facilitator to bring out issues, interpersonal issues, organizational challenges using Lego. And it's surprisingly effective. I usually start by asking people to build their nightmare team member, who is the worst person they've ever worked with. Oh and that's really wonderful, I mean, because it kind of brings out things. And then you start like build your contribution to the team. Build the goal that you're trying to um, uh, head for as a team. And as you get increasingly abstract, what's nice about building things out of Lego is that you'll put a little minifigure, mm -hmm. and then you'll show like the wall, which is the barrier. And maybe there's a person representing some department or some part of the company that's, that's on the wall. And as you do it, you talk about the model. And in some cultures, especially uh, cultures that are maybe more conflict averse, mm -hmm. um, being able to build it and then talk about it and then discuss the model it's a way of putting things out on the table for discussion that may not come out in any other way. Sure. So building abstract concepts with Lego can actually open up very deep discussions that can really um, resolve things before they become bigger problems. I get it. John, one of the concepts that Dave talks about in his lessons is innovation is dating your customer versus fighting the competition. What is your take on that? I think it's I think it's a great lesson, and I think Dave can even share that there's there's data that backs it up. Those of us I think that work with customers, it's probably not a surprise that the closer you are to your customers, and I think the better you are at at listening to what they're telling you in, in a really deep way. It's not usually on the surface, is usually going to give you better results in terms of delivering things that the customers want. But I think also in terms of business results, it's healthier. If, if you are focusing on your customer, uh, it's also gonna deliver the bottom line business results that you're after. Whereas if you just focus on fighting the competition, uh, sometimes it can start to lead towards a bit of a death spiral that, that really doesn't benefit anybody. For sure, if you date your customers and you get the relationship that dating implies, a level of trust that goes with that as well, I think you'd be super powerful. Anything you'd like to add to that, Dave? Yeah, you know, I think the whole dating metaphor is one of, you know, when you met that special person and uh, you wanted to have more of a relationship with them, you try to understand what they care about. And by understanding what you care about, you connect with them and broaden that relationship. And really, that's what innovation should be, is understanding what your customer cares about. It really seems simple when you look at it to talk to them and date them as opposed to just chasing your competition. But it's really hard. Mm -hmm. And it's what Epiroc is, is really working very hard to change because becoming really good at one type of innovation makes other types of innovation more difficult. And so Epiroc is superb at developing you know, heavy equipment, machinery, mining and drilling equipment, and so forth. And learning to do other types of innovation is where Epiroc has spent quite a lot of time recently yeah. to really build that capability. Mm -hmm. Henry Ford once said, if I asked people what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. Dave, how can you listen to the customer and be sure your innovation goes in the right direction and not design that faster horse? Yeah, I think you need to listen to the customer in the sense of you, you want to watch and, and learn about what their challenges and frustrations are. But you need to realize that people don't always know how to express what their challenges are. And uh, one of the things we talk about is that if you want to understand lions, you should go to Africa and see them in their natural habitat, not the zoo. They act very differently there. And so if you want to really understand customers, 
uh, for EPIROC, you have to go out uh, to that work site and you have to really watch because sometimes people just accept things that they don't need to. They don't understand that the limitations there can be solved or, or, or eased uh, with some innovation. John, you must have an example of this in your experience. Yeah, I think, you know, I think broadly speaking, one of the first things we actually do in product owner excellence is we ask the participants to go spend time with customers and we ask them to create a mood map. This is what Dave introduces. It's the first concept of the innovation training that, that he introduces. And the reason for that is because uh, the customers may not tell you exactly what it is that's uh, really causing issues for them. They may not be able to always articulate what it is. And when you see that friction and you really, I, I think, commit to the, the mood map as an example, they start to show up and they start to show up as opportunities that uh, maybe others haven't even seen, even the customers themselves. And you can really start to find some, some really cool innovation ideas. David, what advice would you give Epiroc on building an innovation culture here? Oh, I, I think it's to just do what you're doing. Um, that Epiroc is spending quite a lot of time and effort uh, helping its product managers become product owners, mm -hmm. CEOs of the product. Give them responsibility for really understanding what their customers care about and building more of a relationship with those customers. And so bringing that information back in and thinking about ways to be of service to your customers is what is a great way to create an innovation culture. Awesome, great advice, and I'm glad we're on the right track. I have one more question, the hardest question of all. What is your favorite Lego set? My favorite Lego set is the James Bond DB5. It's just a masterpiece of engineering. Uh, the ejector seat works. You flip up the little thing on the gear shift and the, the lights, uh, the headlights turn into machine guns. The, the front license plate tips over into oh, different wow. uh, things, just like in the movies. It's just a masterpiece of engineering. Sounds awesome. John, what about you? You can't top that, probably. Well, so so until we have a Pit Viper drill Lego set, mm -hmm. which I'm going to motivate for in our budget somewhere. Um, so we love Star Wars Legos in our house, and I would say the UCS ATAT -AT set is probably the most popular and one of our favorites. Well, that's awesome. Thank you both for joining me today. Thank you so much for joining me today. For more helpful tips, please visit miningandconstructionusa.com. See you next time on Mining with Mora. environment to, ex 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 okay, start again. Hold on, I gotta transition this better. Oh, I've always come with bravado. Yeah. <laughs> no, his bravado was beautiful. Less bravado or more? I think more. Okay, I'll bring it. I'll bring wow. It. I'll bring out my Latin side. It's right, you wanted number one because of the bravado. Okay, <laughs> okay, we got you proud. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna be side-eyeing you, is that okay? I was, a, I was on the adult dating market recently. I'm good at everything. Yeah. I'm doing much worse than side eye. Okay. Oh, that's great. Un gusto. Dale. Dave. <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs>